it's all about finding the right tool for the job. As an electric utility company entering the broadband space, you need to build the most cost-effective and reliable networks possible for your customers. Your ability to expand your network over time, offer service to new customers, and quickly repair outages can be improved or impeded by the type of aerial cable you use and where you place it. The power industry has traditionally defaulted to the tried-and-true method of deploying all dielectric self-support cable, also known as ADSS. ADSS is great for many things, especially point-to-point -point fiber connections with relatively infrequent need to access fiber along the route. ADSS doesn't require bonding and grounding, can leverage existing pathways on pole runs and transmission towers, so new poles aren't required and can be installed across long spans before being dead-ended. The demands on fiber infrastructure are changing. With growing FTTX opportunities, particularly in rural communities, utilities are deploying networks differently than they have in the past. As you look forward, consider the full range of aerial cable options to optimize your OPEX and CAPEX spends. Installation methods and costs vary depending on which cable you choose and where you place the cable, either in the power supply zone or communications zone. Deploying in the electrical supply space may impact not only the cost of the initial deployment, but your operations cost to service and maintain your cable plant over time. ADSS cables limit your ability to overlash other cables later should additional fiber be needed. Repeated access into the distribution cables is limited by proximity to the pole, as terminals and closures cannot be suspended on the ADSS span. Additional time for cable prep and cleaning are needed due to its gel-filled construction. Further, cable installed in the power space requires a technician that is certified to operate in that space, and these technicians command a higher rate. Alternatively, traditional gel-free OSP cables are typically overlashed to a steel messenger in the communication space. Technicians working in this space do not require electrical certifications, lowering the labor costs to deploy and maintain. If messenger doesn't already exist, there is added expense up front, or figure eight cables can be used. However, these types of installation methods support additional cables along the same strand for simple incremental network upgrades. Additional bonding and grounding would be required for armored designs. Traditional cables offer higher fiber count options than ADSS cables, particularly if ribbon cable is considered. Why does cable type and where you place it on the pole matter? Broadband needs are frequently in a state of change with new buildings, customer service alterations, renovations, zoning changes, and business growth creating the need for flexible fiber cable facilities. As technology needs change, Flexibility, quick service delivery, and easy fiber access are essential. When building out an access network, weigh the options between ADSS and strand and lash OSP deployments. If you liken the fiber network to your existing electrical plant, ADSS may be most appropriate in the transmission links in the supply zone, while strand and lash of OSP cables may be the better choice for the distribution lower in the communication zone. Whatever your goals, Corning delivers the cable that best suits your network needs.